Over a year ago, I announced the departure of my C63 and that's replacement will have to be in a ballpark region of around £4,000. So I bought this. It's a 2004 3 litre E85 BMW Z4 and it is finished in black sapphire and it's done around 103,000 miles and believe it or not but this is actually now 20 years old and just looking at it you wouldn't think that this is a 2004 20 year old car because I think it's actually aged rather respectfully and also to know that I've actually bought this for £4,000, which I think represents superb value. Truth be told, I've actually owned this Z4 for well over a year now. And for those who are wondering why this Z4 hasn't featured on the channel yet, well, behind the scenes, I still am running my C63, which somehow has not sold yet. And the Z4 was meant to be the replacement of my C63. And also because the Z4 has been a little bit problematic behind the scenes, which we'll delve into later on. Right, that's enough of my life story. Let's now showcase what this Z4 has. So let's start off with the most important component of the car, which is the engine. Will I be able to find the catch? Mm, where are you? Yeah. And there it is. So here it is everyone, the magnificent M54, which is a three litre inline six cylinder engine. This is the range topper with, at the time, there was a 3 litre and 2.5 with this being the 3 litre was the range topper until they introduced the 3 litre SI and then the 3.2 Z4M Coupe or Roadster. This particular engine variant puts out around 230 horsepower and 300 newton metres of torque, which then dishes out the 0 to 62 time to around 5.9 seconds, and that is fed through the rear wheels. But in terms of its gearbox, well, I'll show you in a minute. But yes, engine aside, as you can see, this car is finished in black sapphire and it is presented very nicely with these very tasteful BBS split rims, which unfortunately have all nuked themselves. Now moving on down the side, there would normally be a model designation around here, but unfortunately it looks like they either debadged it or from factory it wasn't put on, which I'm, I like badges. I like being able to show what sort of model designation it is. Even if it's a 2.5, it just completes the car more and it just looks a bit bare without the badge but it's not a bit too much of a deal breaker my favorite part of the car is most definitely the rear though just look at those massive boulder shoulders on the side of the car it really accentuates the way it looks and there's something else i really love about this car and it's the exhaust there's just two of them two chrome exhaust pipes in a performance car is all you need these days they put quad exhausts on anything and i just think it just doesn't look okay i, I, I like the subtle of two exhausts on the side, and I think it just really just makes it look very classy. But most importantly, we have a very important option inside, which makes this drive all the better. And if we go inside, and there it is, the six speed manual. And I believe it has a short shifter because it looks quite short, and others that we've seen online are much longer. Jumping inside a Z4, well, it's actually a rather pleasant place to be considering it's meant to be a two-seater sports car. It doesn't actually feel that claustrophobic and I love how there isn't too much going on in terms of the dashboard. Obviously it doesn't look like there's much going on at all and it looks a bit boring but I actually like the simplicity. It's quite refreshing especially in modern cars where there's screens and things everywhere and I love how small the steering wheel is. It's actually really small to hold but it's, it's actually quite fun. In terms of equipment inside, well, there isn't really much going on. We do have leather and electrically operated seats with like a memory function. We also have a cup hold on the right side, but not on the passenger side. We have a sport button. We have a CD player. We have an auxiliary input in here. Um, we also have aircon, and that's about it. A couple of other things I've got to mention, we actually have a health kit underneath the passenger seat. So if you go to the hairdressers in your Z4 and then you have a catastrophic injury to your ear and they're slipping around, then at least you can bandage yourself afterwards. And behind us, there's a storage area which has a six CD changer. I haven't actually explored that yet or used it, but maybe I ought to do so. And you have 
a couple of things down here to strap something down or a pen. But yes, that is probably about it for the features inside the Z4 that I know of at the moment. Um, but in reality, what else do you need? This is a two-seater sports car for pure driving experience, a six-speed manual, six-cylinder engine at the front. I don't need anything else. One more thing I really want to show you, it's not really necessarily a thing that's important in a Z4, but to me, it's very impressive. But if we just go to the boot, normally it's an area which is well, plagued with no room at all. But if you come in here, I am beyond excited because look how cavernous it is in here. All that room, like uh, we'll get jump on, yeah, funny pun there, but we'll jump into why exactly I've got jump leads in my car in a little bit. But can we just appreciate how much room there is in a Z4's boot? Right, so at the start of the video, like I said, there were some problems behind the scenes since owning this car, some of which have been fixed, such as the Christmas tree that appeared on my dashboard, which was an ABS sensor. There was like a little rubber uh, housing inside the boot, which was causing a water leak. That had to be fixed and replaced because it had completely disintegrated. And there was also the bonnet was like sticking and not closing properly. And all of that um, was kindly fixed by a family member. So if you're watching this, thank you very much. I've also had some other issues where the alarm has been going off and the battery has been going flat and there are still some ongoing issues which are give me some cause for concern. For instance, we have this window here which normally sits quite flush of the rubber but it's not going up properly or as far as it used to. So if I just demonstrate here, open it and then close it. Normally, it, it goes a bit higher than normal. So if we're going on the other side, It seems like it's a bit higher when it goes, but on the other side, it doesn't sit as high. And also when you're driving, you can, hand, can hear more wind coming into the cabin. I just don't know if it's because of this rubber that isn't sitting flush. Whereas on the other side, if I show you again, it just seems to be a bit more of a flush finish. On the topic of opening the car, well, the door handle seems to be a bit sticky and the, like the clicking point where it opens is right at the top and on a hot day or I've noticed a few times it won't open at all which means I have to go around the other side get into the car and open it from the inside um, so yes that might be have to be like a door card off job um, so if you've got any ideas on how to solve that please let me know on the topic of doors well we do have more problems with it because if I then open it with the key here and unlock it one the thing doesn't come up all the way it's not as satisfying noise as it used to be so if i just unlock it now and then open it the alarm will go off ah well today it didn't seem to do that but normally if i lock it the key and then unlock it with the key barrel like now it's going to do it, i think there we go yeah, the alarm seems to go off. It seems like that isn't going up properly. Uh, so I don't really know what the problem is. Obviously when you lock it with the key though, unfortunately, then the alarm goes off like, 10, 15, 20 minutes later, which then is gonna drain the battery. I don't know why, but if you lock it with the essential locking, for some reason, it, it's, I feel like it's connected because this is not flush. I don't know if it's wind getting in, it's setting off the alarm, but obviously the alarm goes off if you lock it with the actual key fob itself. So I have to, at the moment, lock it with the key itself. And then the alarm is then immobilized, I've found out on the forums. So yeah, I'm, I'm yet to find out what that's all about. But if you have any insight as to why all these things are happening, then please do comment down below. One of the best things about the Z4 is that it is a roadster, which means if you press this button here, this button right here, then the roof will then come off and give you a nice open sky sort of experience. However, on this car, uh, well, it's been a love-hate relationship really because some days it likes to work and then some days it doesn't. So if I demonstrate to you now exactly what I mean, it may or may not work, chances are it probably won't. So if I press the button here, what it probably will do is that it will go, it will like open a little bit right up here 
and then it will start flashing red and then get stuck. And then I have to then manually get one of these things out, pull the trim out from here, and then manually close it, and then press the button here to confirm the closure. So we're gonna give it a try now and then see if it does it on camera. So it puts the windows down. Oh, it's working. Right, so I actually filmed this really anticipation of thinking it wouldn't work, but funny enough on camera it does, but I've l luckily I did film this a few days ago where it didn't work, so I could show you exactly what I mean. But let's just close this now to make sure it closes as well. How peculiar. One of the best things about the Z4 is that it only takes around 10 seconds to open and close, which is actually extraordinary. One of the common faults you get with the Z4 is that the roof motor fails, and that is due to its location. And luckily, my Z4 is actually in the proper location, so it won't get broken. So normally the roof motor is located from standard. It is around here or on the other side, I can't remember which side, but it's a it's a it's basically a water pit and water gets in there, water ingress, disaster, stops working. But inside, luckily, you will find the roof motor has been relocated into this quite snug location, so no water ingress can get to it there. My family member who has kindly been working on this car for me and helping me out has been testing the roof motor to make sure it's got power and that it's working properly. And if you do fit a 12 volt like battery ex like externally into the roof motor, it works fine. It goes up, down, up, down with no problems at all. It just seems that there's an intermittent problem with the roof motor or some wiring. I don't, I don't know. It just seems there's something wrong with it because it doesn't even matter like how often you drive it. It's, it was sat for like three weeks. The roof came down and it was completely fine. And then I drove it for four days straight, long journeys. And then I went to try the roof and then it obviously went into its little mode where it just comes off a tiny little piece and then it doesn't move at all. So yeah, I, I don't really understand this little intermittent blip. It just seems uh, there must be like a faulty wire or something. So if you can enlighten me what it could be, then please let me know. Um, it's not the parcel switch either, we've checked that because it doesn't actually have one, um, so it's not that either. I made a post on the Z4 community Facebook page and they recommended that because your alarm keeps going off it's drained the battery, hence that's probably why the roof is not working because it, it takes a lot of power to get the roof working. So I did fit a new battery and it didn't work initially and then after a long long drive and then it came back it seemed to work fine then but then yeah this, the problems come back so it's not the battery either because obviously it's brand new it's a good powered one and even with a long drive after the uh, battery was installed it's yeah it doesn't work and then when it was sat for like three or four weeks yeah the, the roof was started working again and then like i said did four long journeys this week roof stopped working and then at today of all days it decided to work so if any of you have any ideas, especially Z4 people, um, if any of you watching, if you have any ideas on what these problems could be relating to the door, um, sticking the, the battery fob, obviously not locking it properly, and an alarm going off when I keep opening the door, and then the alarm going off if I lock it with the key fob, and of course the intermittent roof um, not working and slash not working. If any of you have any ideas of what that could be, please let me comment down below and I'm not the most mechanically minded and not really practical but I do have a can-do attitude and I'll try my best to do it myself at home before giving in and taking it to the mechanic um, so yes if you do have any ideas please do drop them down below and I'll see if I can get this resolved Well everyone, I'm going to leave that there for now. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this purchase and what you'd have bought for £4,000 down in the comments below. I don't think it's that bad. I think this represents excellent value for money. And if there's any BMW Z4 people in watching this video, then please let me know of like anything that I need to look out for so I can then deal with it immediately. 
If you have enjoyed this video, then please do subscribe and like the video as it gives me a good representation of if this is the sort of stuff you want to see in future videos and also comment down below what you'd have bought for £4,000. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.